Good evening. I am Maya. I want to share Japanese classic movies with you. Mostly those movies were released in 1930s to 1940s. Those movies show Japanese traditional customs, habits, behaviors, and manners in subtle way, that, I am sure you would feel puzzled very often. Those customs and behaviors might be incomprehensible to foreigners as well as to modern Japanese people. Maya, born in 1949, try to explain those mysterious and funny habits or reactions of Japanese in details. Please don't take my comments seriously. This is just my personal view of those times. Those movies were made before I was born, yet they remind me many things that I have experienced in my childhood, or maybe I was heard from my mother, who was born in 1917. I believe those movies must have fascinated my mother in youth. The movie of tonight is Oboro Yonoana. That is, a woman in misty moon night. The address of the full movie version is shown below. You can watch the original movie before or after you watch my review. The first scene, started at a yase, an old entertaining hall of storytellers or vaudevillians. The floor of the hall was tatami mat. You can take a cup of hot tea which was prepared on hibachi, hand heater. Spectators were full of variety, someone looked like businessman who escaped his job retired old man, carpenter, and mother-like woman with child, etc. Bunkichi was one of them listening Kodan story. Those halls were usually located in neighborhoods so the spectators were familiar with each other. The fee was 30 sen, affordable cost to ordinary people. Okiyo, Bunkichi's wife, appeared at the entrance and asked the Geta keeper to call her husband. The Geta keeper went into the hall. Okiyo found Bunkichi's Geta and took them out from the hook. Bunkichi came out complaining to his wife. I was listening the best part, the enemy just came across. Okiyo said the neighbors waited you at home. They wanted to discuss about Kochu. What is Kochu? That is a kind of association of the believers of local temple or shrine. By launching the Kochu, the people gather money for religious purpose or support for something or somebody. This custom has a long history back to Heian period and a lot of variety in local communities. But as a matter of fact, Bunkichi's kocha was almost a hobby-like, or excuse of drinking occasions, you know. Bunkichi apologized the three men kept them waiting. The men also apologized to interrupt Bunkichi's entertainment. It is okay. My fee is roha, free. Fee was free means Bunkichi was special customer somehow. Now, the three men offered a plan to donate Ishidoro, stone lantern to their shrine, for the gratitude of the past three years' safety life. 
and they urged Funk Ichi to take leadership. Okiyo doesn't like it. Because taking the leadership meant taking all responsibility, that means, he had to cover the shortage of donation. Her experience told her not to accept the job. But Bunk Ichi was easily flattered. いや、<笑> Okiyo disappeared. Bunkichi called her to prepare drinking for the men, she pretended not to hear. The three men sensed her mood and hurriedly stood up their seats. Then Okiyo appeared and smiled, Oh, I am sorry not to treat well. Well, you know, in this situation, you shouldn't go back to accept the drinking. That is not wise. Okiyo accused Bunk Ichi why he took the job. Last time they had to spend extra money in the same situation. During the street sanitation plan they had to take the burden of disinfectant and other costs. Complaining went on, but Okiyo knew she would help him after all. Otoku, Bunkichi's sister, visited them. Oh ho, she was wearing mask, it seems that in Japan wearing mask was not uncommon already in that time. Otoku brought two packages of gift which were given to the two technicians of the shop. Do you understand? It shows Otoku was so close to the shop, as she was a family member. As a family member she had to care the important technicians of the shop. Otoku started to talk about her worry on her son Siichi who was a university student studying law. The worry of Otoku was that, his son was not studying the law books but reading literature a lot. So what? It is nothing, Bunkichi and Okiyo tried to calm Otoku. I thought he had done eloped or something. Bunkichi mocked Otoku, who talks back. No. Not like you. Bunkichi glanced Okiyo and added in haste. Don't joke like that. My love affair is ended with this. He pointed Okiyo. 
The conversation suggested that Bunk Ichi had many love affairs. Okiyo was one of them and the last. Okiyo said, You cannot ignore any small matter about your son Sate Chan. Against Okiyo's remark, Otoku hit Okiyo's nerve. You cannot understand, because you have no child. Bunkichi grimaced that was Okiyo's weak point, that is, the couple had no children. Please note that this was important to understand the later development of this story. Now Otoko continued to complain. Smoking cigar and drinking rice wine, sake, her attitude was very natural, that suggested that she was working in the geisha world. But she was now working at an ordinary restaurant for the sake of her son Siichi's education. By the way, do you know what kind of shop they were operating? It was kimono laundry shop, called Ere Hari. In order to wash kimono, you make loosen the all stitches to separate each part. You will find that kimono is made with number of square pieces. The laundry shop washed the square pieces, add starch, and dry. For large pieces of kimono they use shinshibari technique, and for small pieces they use a board, harita, on which they attached the small pieces. When I was child I helped my mother to do those jobs. Peeling off the pieces from the board was a fun to a child. The shop was remaking of kimono also, in which dyeing or coloring was a highly skilled job. At last, Bunkichi promised Otoku that he would talk Siichi to study hard on his own subject. Next morning, Sunday, at Otoku's house. Otoku was preparing Siichi's breakfast. Your miso soup becomes cold. Hurry. Otoku urged her son. Siichi, probably read novels all night, answered lazily. Wash your face. No, I decided to wash face at school. That's why the toothpaste doesn't lessen much. But today is Sunday. Wash now. Bunkichi visited them as he promised. Brother, take the seat here. Siichi, your uncle gave us your favorite Shayamai. Otoko showed Bunkichi the best seat in front of Hibachi, hand heater. Other students enjoy sports or hiking. They look healthy but Siichi is not. Bunkichi said Siichi looked fine, and added. These days I heard young people using a word hikingu, what is hikingu? Hiking means walking around, uncle. Is that so? Wow, then I was doing hikingu frequently, to Yoshiwara or Shinagawa. Yoshiwara was legal brothel since Edo period which was closed in 1957 after 340 years operation. 
In the year of 1936 when this movies was released, it was still operated, so Bunkichi must have been regular customer. Otoku realized it was time to go work. Siichi, move the used dishes to the sink. I know, I will wash them. Yes, the cups cannot be washed at school. Otoku grinned. And before leaving Otoko left an allowance for her son. Bunkichi followed her and clacked Flintstone at her back. This was a traditional custom for praying the safety of a person going out. By the way, did you realize that Otoku made hot sake for Bunkichi? Wow, it was still morning. But okay, it was their life. Later, Bunkichi and Siichi walked to the river Oakawa. Siichi told his uncle that he wanted to go literature department. Bunkichi reminded Siichi his father's tragedy and encouraged Siichi working hard. Otoku wanted Siichi becoming lawyer. Her husband, Siichi's father, died in tragedy, bankrupted, because he endorsed his friend's debt. The father knew nothing about law. To revenge his chagrin Otoku believed it was the best way that Siichi became lawyer. You might notice in other movies that, back then, regretting the ignorance of law was used as a motive of study. At the beginning of 20th century, Japan was struggling to catch up Western world, and studying the legal procedures was utmost issue. Siichi finally accepted his uncle's advice. To Siichi, Bunkichi was his father, and to Bunkichi Siichi was his son. At Ushia, a restaurant, where Otoko was working. The restaurant was huge and now busy with full of customers. The restaurant looks like family restaurant as well as pub in modern terms. Otoko was experienced waitress. She managed each customer efficiently.
Here, she glanced at a student sitting next table with family. Every student reminds her son Siichi. Occasionally a customer gave her a cup of sake, she accepted without hesitation, and continued to prepare pot cooking on the table. When the customer traffic subsided, waitresses gathered at backside where they checked bills or chatted with colleagues. Days later Siichi were walking with a friend. Siichi said he was going to visit his uncle's shop. At a corner they saw a beautiful woman passed by. The friend mattered with admiration. What is her hairstyle? It is called Kirei Tenjin. Siichi told at once. The Kirei Tenjin hairstyle began commonly popular in Geisha world. The friend envied Siichi's uncle living in nice circumstances. The same geisha visited Bunkichi's shop for remaking her kimono. Geisha must be good customers for the shop. That's why Siichi knew well about them including their hairstyles. Okiyo took a kimono the geisha brought in. You knew my size. Yes, certainly. Oh, what a big stain on it. Yes, my customer poured sake on my kimono. Bad luck. I see. But good chance. You can make him to buy new kimono. Soon Siichi came in the shop. Siichi gave a package of sweets or something to Okiyo. Hearing Siichi's coming, Bunkichi appeared from living room. What a relief, Siichi. We have a big problem. Glancing at him the geisha joked to Okiyo. Oh, what a nice young man. I fell in love instantly. Okiyo laughed. No, better not. He is so innocent boy. In the living room the three men of Kochua and Bunkichi discussed the problem. Bunkichi told Siichi that someone in the neighborhood complained about their collecting money of Kochua for Ishidoro, Stone Lantern. The claimer insisted that it was not legal. Bunkichi checked Raposensho, a digest book of Japanese laws, but it was out of their comprehension. They asked Siichi, a student of law, an advice on the matter. First Siichi made sure an important point. You didn't force him to donate, did you? Bunkichi denied immediately. No, of course, not. One of the three men added. And that man threatened us to sue. Siichi asked them. Did you report about your collecting money to the police? No, it was just only our limited small areas matter. Then, it was not legal, sir. Siichi continued. It was not written in Raposensho, but there is a book of police rules and examples. According to the rule, you have to report of collecting money whatsoever beforehand, including your address, its purpose, and targeted amount, etc. <laughs> the men admired Siichi's knowledge and Bunkichi asked Siichi to help them to report the police. Siichi promised to help them. Bunkichi was proud of his nephew. Okiyo said how his mother loved Siichi. <laughs> Yeah.
くなるほどなんですよ。無理はありませんよ。立派なもんですからな。ダメしたよ。<笑><笑>
じゃあ俺は女に付き合ってやろうおめえさんもう帰りましょうってやんでお勘定だはいさあまだまだバーダーバーダーと Now, at a bar that doesn't look like Western bar, but you can see a few girls in Western dresses. At the bar again, Bunk Ichi started to praise Si Ichi's performance on the Ishidoro. He repeated how he was proud of Si Ichi. Si Ichi annoyed. だからメモリさん、僕の言うこと聞いて、今日とかもう帰りましょう。あれ俺のお,お色味くんねえこと言いやがるぞ。まあいいから、なるさ。あっちよ。じゃあ、次行くわ。失礼だね。ハイボールしたあっち。Then Bunkichi found a woman who looked familiar. It was Kotaro, a geisha Bunkichi knew. Hey Kotaro, long time not to see. They exchanged greetings. For four years, five years not to see. She told her story that her Dana was died and withdrew herself from her geisha's shop. Dana means her patron, in this case. In Japanese, personal pronouns such as I, she, or he have a lot of varieties. The third person pronoun Dana means husband, important customer, employer, etc., and Bunkichi's neighborhood gentlemen are also called Dana Shu, who have small leisure time and money, very commonly shop owners. Kotaro said she withdrew her geisha shop because she felt geary to the deceased Dana's wife. It suggested that her status as mistress was acknowledged by the patron's wife even if it was not openly. In modern sense, it might be difficult to understand, but in those times, it was not uncommon. Still, she could go back to her geisha shop, but she said there was a lot of another giri. I see. Bunkichi nodded. So we must nod too. This is not a point to argue. Kotaro said, Sorry to bother you to listen my story. I changed my name to Teruko. Here I am called Teruko. Teruko showed a name list of her customers. There was no name written. She was new. She needed to earn her own customers. That was her situation.
てるねんお待ちどうさまずっとんのじゃねえかどうもありがとうございます Siichi finally made Bunkichi to leave and asked the bill. For paying the bill, Bunkichi took out his wallet and found one note missing. Siichi too, had not enough money as a matter of course. I will go to mother and get money. No, don't do that. Bunkichi knew very well, if Siichi's mother Otoku knew that they visited a bar, Otoku would be furious. Teruko approached to the barmaid who brought the bill and whispered something. Presumably Teruko guaranteed the bill. Teruko and the barmaid assured Bunkichi it was okay. Pay next time. But Bunkichi wouldn't accept Teruko's favor. <laughs> next scene Otoku played Shamizen String in a man who was the owner of the restaurant shop where Otoku was working, was singing. Otoku, presumably working as geisha in the past, so she could teach her master shamisen song. Bunkichi called Otoku at the shop's kitchen door. Your voice sounds sexy without your appearance. Bunkichi flattered Otoku in his way. Otoku accepted it without offense. Well, my master is crazy in singing these days, so I help him to practice. This singing means kauta, hoda, or nagata, Japanese traditional popular entertainment. Hoda or kauta was a kind of pop music in those modern days in Japan. Now, Bunkichi used his full steratege in order to get money from Otoku. Otoku, well, Siichi and I went for small drinks, where we met a professor who is teaching Siichi. So, you know, I invited him, but unfortunately my money was not enough. You know, I cannot make him pay. Of course not. Bunkichi's strategy worked very well, but Otoku added. Where is he? I'd like to greet the professor. Bunkichi, stopped her in haste. No, no, no. Your appearance would embarrass Siichi. Okay, take this money. Otoku withdrew and gave money additionally. I'm 
またお目にかかれるんでしょ At the bar, Siichi waited Bunk Ichi. Teruko was taking care of him. Teruko said, I hope we will meet again. Next scene, days later, at Otoku's house. Otoku found a letter to Siichi. You got letter often from this friend. Is he really your junior school classmate? Yes, we met accidentally, since then we are getting close again. He is good at baseball, though in the game we are enemy. Siichi tried to soothe Otoko's worry and finally went to his room with the letter. Siichi opened the letter. It was from Teruko as expected. Sorry for giving you a letter like this, despite that we have met just before. Next evening Karasumori Sama festival, I will take a holiday. So I wait you at the same place. The letter told that they met each other frequently after the bar's incident. Siichi burned the letter. Evidence must be destroyed before Otoko reads it. At the Karasumori Sama Festival. Siichi said, I have to rewrite envelopes. Mother becomes suspicious. That means Siichi made envelopes of the Teruko's letter. Do you understand the meaning? It means, if the envelope is written by woman's hand, Otoko would be mad just for that. Siichi knew his mother very well. Teruko said, I feel guilty for doing like this. To your mother as well as to your uncle. Siichi said. You don't need feel guilty. We had nothing done wrong. Just meet and chat. Yes, you don't need feel guilty. Only I, am bad. If you are bad, I am bad too. Siichi gave a small package to Teruko. A lotion with hormone. Oh, Club Nuiki. Thank you. It was well-known lotion in those times. Funny. This part is very unnatural. Must be sponsored by the cosmetic company. Cool. 
And then, Teruko said. Will you take me to my apartment? To the door. Siichi hesitated but he took her home after all. Siichi tried to leave at the door, but Teruko insisted to come in. Siichi and Teruko insisted each other for long time. ないとこ。あきえたでしょ。あたし一人きりなんですね。ね。ね。ね。に怖がらないでも大丈夫よ。いや、どうしたらいい。お互いに人に知られていいことじゃありません。私が悪者になるって言ったじゃないの。何考えてんの。いいからお入りなさいよ。私のせいなんだ。Finally Siichi followed her. Days later, Siichi sitting alone, deeply thinking. At Teruko's apartment, Teruko found Siichi at her room. Siichi asked her. How was the hospital? Teruko was pregnant. Teruko said, I am bad woman, but I would never make you getting in trouble. 
I can manage myself and my child.私は悪いよ。Siichi glanced at his student hat. His study was not completed yet. Teruko said. After I delivered to a child I am thinking to go Dalian, China, where my acquaintance opened a big shop. I can earn money there. Siichi said. Let me think too. My study will be completed soon. I will prepare to be a father. ありがとう。なんとか Teruko cried. I am sorry, sorry, indeed. Next scene, at a Shiyu restaurant, Otoko was taking care of student group. Students asked her sake more and more. Otoko whispered a student who was Kanji, a person in charge of the party. Otoko gave advice him that this student was bad drinker, and that student was eating for three persons. Your budget did not cover all the cost, and added that she cheated their bill more than her capacity. The kanji student pleaded her to go on. At the corner of the restaurant, Otoku always favored students but sometimes they were doing too much, she complained to one of colleagues. <laughs> Looking Otoku, 
the colleague woman started to say something that shocked Otoku. The colleague said she saw Siichi walking with a woman, maybe at the festival. The colleague said the woman walking with Siichi did not look like student girl. No not such that. Otoko was upset, and in the middle of talking she left her job to the colleague and rushed out. At the home, Otoko accused Siichi furiously. Siichi could not tell her the truth. If he told the truth Otoko would kill herself. Frequent letters, frequent going out in night, thinking deeply. Do you think I don't notice like that? お前はそんなことあったのかい。10万年も死んでみて働いてきて報いの。こんなことだったのかい。お母さん。僕が女と何をしたってんだい。どっからそんなこと考え出したの？女馬鹿馬鹿しい当て釣りをで騒ぐなんて、みっともないよ。お母さん、はっきり言うよ。僕はあくまで潔白だよ。じゃあ、その女
った一人の息子を疑うなんて私もよっぽどバカだったよでもおかげでハレバレしたよどうだお前を疑ったことおとつきにしてもらえたのかもしれないよ。ああ、ごめんなさい。Now see i c h i was cornered to the dead end. At Bunkichi's shop. Siichi visited his uncle. Bunkichi was helping Okio, that is, he was loosening kimono's sewing. Siichi teased Bunkichi. Uncle, you are doing the job very well. Yes, I must earn. Otherwise, my wife would not give me allowance. She cheated me one note from the three. Okiyo laughed. Behind Okiyo. Siichi whispered Bunkichi. Uncle, I have big problem. Oh, woman. Noticing something serious, Bunkichi urged Siichi go out. Okiyo was surprised a little. So soon? You have just came. I was thinking we will go somewhere to eat. Nevertheless, she gave Bunkichi a money for noodle or something and asked Siichi not let Bunkichi drink. You are so nice today, said Bunkichi, and Siichi assured her. But, after all, Bunkichi took Saki. Siichi's problem totally annoyed him. At first, Bunkichi was not surprised much. But the matter of child made him shocked. They changed the seats to private table. Child, so the matter is so deep. I am sorry. 
On the other hand, that's why a secret relationship is so exciting. That was a remark of old playboy Bunk Ichi. Is it really your child? Yes sir, I am sure. You didn't tell it to your mother. No, I can't. Yes, of course. Never tell her. Bunkichi told Otoko's efforts to raise her son by single-handed. What are you going to do, Siichi? I am thinking to marry her. Are you going to make your mother cry? You know, remember such mess just as you're reading novels. If she found this she would become insane. And how can you earn money for living? Think the cost for hospital and midwife as well. It is impossible. Siichi started to sob. Back to Bunkichi's shop. Two technicians were still working hard. A technician and Okiyo were shaking large part of kimono piece after drying. Bunkichi told them to end today and recommended to visit Yase Theater. Very soon, theater's reduction time started. As a regular customer Bunkichi knew such thing very well. The two men, who wanted to complete day's work, declined, but Bunkichi insisted and gave them small money for the theater fee. Nabiaki Yudin Sound of Walking Noodle Shop After the technicians left the shop, Okiyo moved briquettes from Hibachi to Naga Hibachi and started to prepare Bunkichi's evening drink and dinner. Hesitantly Bunkichi started to talk. Okiyo, I am sorry. I have done terribly stupid thing. Oh? What kind of plan you took apart again? I made love with a woman and she became pregnant. What? Naturally Okiyo got upset. Bunkichi said. I know I am not forgiven. But, please forgive me. Please. What are you going to do? Okiyo demanded. Bunkichi said. Under the circumstances we have to take the child. I know you are upset, but please be its mother. Why should I? 
Naturally, Okio did not accept. Please. As soon as the woman delivered to a child I will cut the tie completely. Please take care of the child. The child is innocent. I am innocent also. I would not deserve to take such burden as taking care of stranger's child. Please. Otoku's house, Okiyo visited Otoku and told the story. Yes, Nesan, you have good reason to be furious. It is terrible. Otoku agreed with with Okiyo. Okiyo said, Yes, I was so upset that I couldn't sleep last night at all. I see. Your eyes are totally red. Okiyo looked at mirror. My brother is really bad guy. I can't believe he had done such thing for his age. Yes, he fooled me. When we were going to marry, he pleaded me to marry. Do you remember that time, Ka-chan? Okay, okay. You like him after all. Wait, be relax. I will make tea. Okiyo added. Ka-chan must give me more sympathy. I will always listen your worry about Sei-chan. Nevertheless, this time you don't support me much. Because my son is not grown up completely. Your husband is matured adult. Such matured man made love with a girl like his own daughter. Calm down Nesan. Otoku tried to soothe Okiyo. Otoku called Okiyo Nesan, means elder sister, sister-in-law, precisely. I know you are upset, Nesan, that is naturally. But think that if you accept the issue and keep your husband face he would be grateful with full of his heart. I know you are great woman. And he promised he would cut the tie with the woman after the child birth. ぐっと then Otoku added, Once you hold a baby in your hands, you will know how delightful it is. If the child is mine, yes, I am sure I understand the feeling. Okiyo protested. No, any child is lovely. The baby is not legitimate child. Pity. Otoku continued her experience of child raising. Think that. 
a crawling baby getting stand with its foot and utters first word, mammy, and following you. Oh, it is so touching. Okiyo pressed her temple to ease headache. She looked like press a piece of umbashi, dried plum, traditional remedy. Otoka continues. I really hoped you will have a child someday. You are so good couple. I know you are upset for his betray, but think that the baby is given from the heaven, then everything looks different. Gradually the idea of having baby is getting real to Okiyo. Ka chan okay. I will not complain anymore. Great. Leave it to me. I will manage the matter well. Otoku promised. Then Bunkichi visited Otoku for looking Okiyo. Has she come? Bunkichi whispered. Don't scare me. I have been worrying you after you left without saying. Did you really worry me? Of course, you fool. Yes, I am fool. Bunkichi and Okiyo quarreled again but they seemed settled now. Next scene, Bunkichi and Siichi walking together. Bunkichi said, Don't worry. Leave the matter to me. You can go back to study. But I tell you, you must never meet Kotaro again for all your life. And never tell this to anybody, you know, not only to Otoka but anyone. Next scene, Okiyo's shop. Hairdresser visited Okiyo and make her hair. Okiyo's shop was busy, customers coming one after another. Young customer gave her Zabutin seat to the older customer. The older customer told Okiyo, who was making hair, no need to hurry and asked where was the husband. My husband visited this bad man. Okiyo showed her small finger, that meant a mistress. The customers admired Okiyo how generous Okiyo was, expressing that was a real town woman. Accepting the existence of husband's mistress as well as the baby was not so easy even if in those times. Next scene, Teruko's new room. Bunkichi made a small kamidana, Shinto altar. You may not stay long here. 
but Kami Dana is important. You must pray every morning and evening. Yes, thank you for everything. I am sorry. Don't say so. You don't feel good with such old man as I am, but please stand it. If someone notices that our relation is fake, everything will be ruined. Oh, yes, one more thing, within a day or two, a maid will come. Thank you, sir. No, I am appreciating you. You gave up about Siichi, I am so grateful. Be relaxed and gave a healthy childbirth. Then Otoko visited. Bunkichi whispered Teruko hurriedly. An obliging woman coming. Do not make her suspicious, okay? Otoko cared Teruko's body and took out many things for new household. Otoko kept talking. Hey Naiizen you have to take care of her, do not make her feeling cold. Bunkichi thanked her. You know, they use frequently a term mi fuditsu as childbirth. Such kind of classic remark is not used today. Mi fuditsu means becoming two bodies, that is, mother and child. Otoko repeatedly made sure that Teruko must keep warm. Otoko showed many things she brought for Teruko including dinner and a special scarf with mogasa herb for warming Teruko's body. This is a good house for the rent. My Siichi will get such house soon. After he graduated he will be able to manage those things. After giving many advice about childbirth, Otoku and Bunkichi left Teruko's room.
Soon after, Siichi visited Teruko. Siichi said he couldn't stand it anymore, felt so guilty toward Aunt who knew nothing. He insisted to reveal the truth to his mother but Teruko stopped him. She could not betray Bunkichi. Especially she could never do such cruel thing to Otoku, who made Mogasa scarf by herself. Teruko told Ziichi, We have to keep Giri. Think about your mother. ねえ、ちゃん。私たち、そんな甘ったりこと言ってる時じゃないのよ。お互いに譲りだけは守らなくちゃいけない。この後ご一緒にしはってごらんなさい。おじさんの顔に泥を塗るようなもんだわ。
I am sorry. Please keep your study. Next scene, Bunk Ichi was taking a bath in Sento, public bath. He was called suddenly. Okiyo rushed in and told Bunk Ichi Teruko was in critical condition. A maid, probably Teruko's maid said Teruko was hospitalized due to kidney failure, toxemia of pregnancy. At the hospital, a doctor came. Wow, the doctor was played by Saberi Shin. The big star is playing a small role here. The doctor told Bunk Ichi, Okiyo, and made that Teruko was in critical condition. Okiyo and the maid started to sob. Do not show her such face. Calm down and followed me later. Bunkichi said to Okiyo and entered the room. Bunkichi encouraged Teruko but he realized her death was coming soon.
Bunky Chi whispered. Do you want to see Siichi? I can secretly manage him to come. But Teruko said. No sir. Just tell him study hard and be a great man. Bunky Chi thanked her decision. Okiyo and the maid entered room. Okiyo encouraged Teruko, Teruko said. I am sorry, madam. Bunkichi gave a handkerchief to the sobbing maid. Oh, rain started. At the funeral of Teruko. The neighborhood visited and expressed condolence. Okiyo, sobbing, thanked them. Do you understand? Teruko was treated as a member of family so naturally. <laughs> a neighbor said. Then we will give the dead chant. Okiyo thanked them. Thank you very much sir. That is the best thing for the dead. I understand, ma'am. We will chant till the drum skin is broken. This is not a line to giggle, but chanting till the drum broken, that is so funny. Bunkichi was exhausted. Okiyo said. I am sorry her. Maybe I was too hard to her at first. I am regretting. No, of course not. Don't say such thing. Maybe this is the sentiment of Japanese. 
Okiyo had a good reason to be harsh to Teruko, but after her death Okiyo felt guilty. At the funeral dinner, Otoko helped to serve sake to the visitors. It's funny that so many people gathered for the funeral of a person to whom they never acquainted at all. But if a family member of their neighbors died they felt obligation to come. Besides, they could drink. One of neighbors said, You lost your child too. I am sorry. Bunkichi said, It was destined life. I must accept. All the other people regarded the faked relationship of Bunkichi and Teruko as true and they accepted the story as it was. If the baby was delivered, they would accept the child as Bunkichi's natural child. Otoku said Bunkichi, I have to go back my shop and finish my job. Come back as soon as possible. Before leaving Otoku told the technicians, chant for the dead from our family. The technicians answered. Yes, ma'am. We will give the best chant. This conversation was so funny. Do the chant Kikyoku, well, Kikyoku means joyful. This religious sect is especially famous of loud chant. But okay, this is it. Out of the house, Siichi was standing alone. Siichi came in the house. Bunkichi noticed Siichi. Siichi asked Bunkichi to let him pray for her.
Bunkichi said to the visitors. Please take sake and food more. You don't need to be so quiet. Just go on go on. And he told one of technicians to go liquor shop to buy more sake. Maybe those visitors didn't decline extra sake, I am sure. Bunkichi gestured Siichi to move out. A drinker's voice. Folks, let's chant again. Yes, sure. They remembered why they were there. To the visitor's ears, Bunkichi thanked Siichi. Thank you very much to come, Siichi. As soon as the chant started Siichi asked Bunkichi. Where is my mother? I cannot stand this. If I don't tell the truth, I am not human being. Bunkichi urged him to go out. Outside, Siichi insisted that he would reveal the truth. I killed her. It was me who killed her. I want to say in front of God she is my wife. Bunkichi persuaded Siichi not to tell, it was against the will of the deceased. Bunkichi said to Siichi, The woman really loved you. That's why she pretended to be my mistress in order to save your life. She didn't want to ruin your life. Think that. In her deathbed the woman believed you would be great man in future. Do not betray her. I don't want to be a liar. I know, I know. But the matter is not to be liar, but to be a man. For the sake of the dead. Finally Bunkichi said, Go, back home and cry for her with all your heart. At a Shiyu restaurant, Otoku was busy in working. A colleague said, I heard someone died in your family. I am sorry. Yes, she was so young to die. Pity. 
pity, pity. Well, how was it? The director Gosho Hino Suk described very detailed life of people in those times, mostly of which we lost today. The title, Aburoyo no Ana, that is, Teruko, came from a poem by Kubota Mantero. In faint spring light, looks like a woman. I have known. A fragile woman, the creator wanted to express her as Aburoyo no Ana. I assume that the woman remind people a well-known picture by Takehisa Yumaji. As a matter of fact I doubted the woman Teruko also known as Kotaro, was so fragile or not. Because it was her, who seduced Siichi. No I don't blame her, she admitted she was bad and it was nobody's fault actually. In Japanese movies we saw often the weakness of human beings. This is one of them and we love them. Thank you for listening. Good night.